Hello YouTube, this is Dr. Matt Moynihan from the Fusion Podcast. I want to give a little talk that I gave at the Pittsburgh Nerd Night uh, in August of 2021. thought that the folks on the internet would have uh, a lot of use for this. This is uh, a high-level discussion of nuclear fusion. Hope you enjoy it. Good evening, my name is Dr. Matt Moynihan. Uh, today I want to talk about a power source that I believe we absolutely need to be spending more time, money, and resources on in this country. That is nuclear fusion. This is a picture of different fuel sources up here. 1,000 megawatts of power. Uh, you can see it's uh, 2.7 million tons of coal, 133 mils in California, um, 28 tons of uranium, but uh, you can do the whole thing, and 250 kilograms of deuterium tritium. That's the kind of uh, energy density that nuclear fusion provides. Uh, the statistic that I have uh, from the Discovery Channel is that you could take all the energy needs for a person, uh, their, their heating, their water, their transportation, everything they need, for 30 years, you could get that all from a bathtub of fusion fuel. Um, that's about 30 gallons of water. Um, so it's kind of an amazing power source, and it's... It's a, it produces anywhere from 10 to 15 times more energy than a conventional fission power plant. And I'm here to talk about it. I I've have a fusion podcast, fusionpodcast.com. You can look that up. Uh, I'm working on a, a book, new book. There's a picture of the new cover down there that we hope to publish soon. So, But fusion is a very potent power source. It's so potent, potent in fact, that it could be used for fusion-driven rockets. Uh, this is uh, two pictures of two fusion concepts from different companies in this space. There are several private companies pursuing this that are getting funding in the United States from the federal government to pursue a fusion rocket. All these concepts are roughly the same. You have a chamber in the back of the ship. The fusion plasma occurs at the center of the chamber. Material uh, leaves at relativistic like speeds that hits the surface of the ship and then it's directed out the back pushing the, sh the rocket forward so on the left you have helicity drive it's a very nice concept from in california and then on the right you have the princeton fusion frc out of princeton new jersey uh, we have some estimates uh, we're looking at something like uh, 110 days to mars if we had a rocket like this it makes the interplanetary trip uh, basically equivalent to what a trip across the Atlantic Ocean would have been like several hundred years ago. So it's really a must-have if we want to master interplanetary flight, and I think these concepts really need to get a lot more attention. I will also say that a lot of these re reactor concepts are innovative. Um, the helicity drive especially relies on magnetic reconnection, which I think is sort of an unsung plasma trick that a lot of concepts need to use but also the advanced superconductors. So we have superconductors now that are a range of 10 Tesla, but 40 Tesla te concepts exist in labs. There's no reason why we can't bring 40 Tesla uh, magnets out uh, to make these concepts ultra high field. And that would really change the game. But what about energy solutions or solutions closer to Earth? We don't have fusion power on the market, but what we do have is commercial applications of nuclear fusion. So this is an example of Shine. This is a picture of their staff. Uh, Shine and Phoenix are twin companies out of Wisconsin. And since 2005, they developed some pretty advanced fusion technology. Today, for a million dollars, you can buy a machine about the size of your car that will fuse material for 182 hours continuously. That's a picture in the lower left of the Thunderbird machine. That's the one I'm talking about. Uh, the Thunderbird produces neutrons from a fusion reaction, and those neutrons can be fed into material that will form medical isotopes. A very exciting billion-dollar market that I think both Shine and Phoenix will absolutely crush in the coming years. And currently, they have several plants under construction in Indonesia, one in the United States, and one over in Europe. Additionally, the neutrons can be used for neutron imaging, so N-rays are definitely a possibility. On the right is a picture from Phoenix of an object imaged using an N-ray. Uh, I also think that there are applications for this in rare gas generation. That's one market that I don't think anyone's gone after. Helium, a few years ago, was in an international shortage in 2011. 
uh, where helium prices went up through the roof. So you're fusing hydrogen, you're making helium. There's no sense in not trying to see if you could purify the product and sell it that way. So there's another whole market for fusion that's really untapped and it could be quite lucrative. Uh, additionally, of course, there are material testing. Neutrons uh, can be sometimes expensive to get from conventional fission reactions. Depending on your energy spread, this solution could work for you. I want to caution everyone that uh, fission neutrons are several orders of magnitude more uh, powerful than fusion neutrons in, in density as well as, as power. So you got to check your math there. Uh, finally, there is the, the application of cancer treatment, um, and TAE Technologies does does have a spin-off where they go after that with some of the stuff they develop for the fusion reactor. So then there's uh, private fusion itself and uh, very happy to report that you know we're now up to over two and a half billion dollars in venture capital funding for nuclear fusion that's come over the last 15 years. These teams you know they think they can get there with the superconductors. I think the biggest story in this field right now is the superconductors. Um, we've seen ultra high field superconductors play out in the tokamak community but what about the other communities what about general fusion what about tae um, can you imagine what a 40 tesla type magnet would do for a concept like ct fusion the dynamac or uh, the princeton field reverse configuration uh, fields of those strengths and a magnet that could run continuously pretty much changes the entire back end of the reactor from a pulse powered system to a continuously running system it basically what's emerges is an entirely new class of fusion reactor that the world really hasn't seen before. Of course, the story is playing out in the tokamak community, tokamak energy and commonwealth. But what about these other concepts? I think the next 10 years is going to be really exciting because that's what's going to happen. I would also say that these superconductors are enabling uh, private entities to basically compete with the government laboratories. We can see private groups doing things that only a few years ago that were only relegated to large government labs. So yeah, private fusion, we're, we're making progress and the rest of the world really needs to be, pay attention. We've made progress because we've been at this almost 70 years. Uh, 1957, Scalia won the first machine to do nuclear fusion that wasn't a bomb um, and since then a lot of technologies have been tried over the decades this is a flow chart of the technologies i write about this in the book we've got them color coded here for the different chapters that that are in the book many of these have been tried some of them are dead end some of them probably need to be looked at again I think it's important for anybody that's getting into this field to have a sense of the history, to see what concepts have come before, because we tend to see every 10 to 15 years the same ideas, sometimes the same bad ideas come up, and people try to go after private funding for some concepts that may not be that great. So you need to understand that, and uh, my book is a great resource for that, so check it out online if you, if you don't know where it is. Look me up at www.fusionconsultant.net. We've made real progress. This is a plot from Michel Labarge. I won't claim to have this plot. He used this in the TED Talk in 2014. But I, I think it's worth underscoring that fusion has kept pace with Moore's Law. Uh, if you look at the performance of fusion, plot that against Moore's Law through the decades, you can see a pretty much consistent behavior. And that's amazing because the microelectronics and computer industry is a trillion dollar a year global industry. And fusion is one of those spaces that almost nobody cares about or as no one has noticed. So the fact that we have kept pace really speaks to how dedicated um, the R&D community is to this concept. And I think people should pay take this more seriously. We now have a fusion industry association. I'm, pr I'm a proud member of the Nuclear Fusion Industry Association in the United States. My firm, New Light Fusion Consultants, is down there on the lower right. Member, member companies and then second tier supporting companies. Our industry association is an effective group and if, if folks want to get in touch, I recommend checking them out on the web, uh, reach out. Um, we love to talk. We love to talk about fusion, what the implications are for the United States um, energy environment and uh, technical STEM education in the US and how we can foster more growth in this uh, emerging space and how we can ultimately get to net power. So. Uh, thanks, folks. Uh, I appreciate the time. Thank you for listening. I hope that was too short. Uh, check me out, uh, Fusion Podcast. 
Um, I also have a Quora website that answers a lot of minutia questions. I have over 500 questions on there, and I'm always looking for good questions. I, I, it tends to be after four or five months of on Quora, you tend to see the same questions come up again and again and again. I'm always looking for someone who's got some really crazy question that, that really makes you think. FusionConsultant.net is my site, and I've got a YouTube channel, and I've also got the podcast. So it's a little dated now, but it's plenty of really great interviews with wonderful fusion researchers from around the United States and the European Union. All right, well, I hope everyone takes care out there. Uh, best of luck. and.